towards the end of the first night of the first Democratic Party debate of 2020, Chuck Todd posed a question to the candidates that I found pretty curious. He asked them who they thought was the biggest geopolitical threat to the United States. Now, I take issue with the framing of this question because it assumes that we have threats that are comparable in any way to the threat that we pose to other countries. And it assumes that, you know, maybe the United States military industrial complex is justified in occupying numerous countries at once and having 900 military bases. So the connotations of this are, are they're, they're negative. I don't like it. And I don't like that Chuck Todd asked this question. However, with that being said, if you're savvy, you can retool this question in a way that is not militaristic or inherently hawkish. Some candidates did this. Other candidates, not so much. So in my view, I'm saying one of two things. If you ask me what the biggest geopolitical threat or national security threat is to the United States, I'm either saying nuclear proliferation or climate change or both. Now, since you can't um, choose two things, since they said pick one, I probably would have said climate change, but saying nuclear proliferation, that will also suffice. Some of them, though, wow. Horrible, horrible responses. Take a look. What is the biggest threat to what is Who is the geopolitical threat to the United States? Just give me a one word answer, Congressman Delaney. <clears throat> Could you repeat the question? Greatest sure. geopolitical threat to the United States right now, Congressman Delaney? Well, the biggest uh, geopolitical challenge is China, but the okay. biggest geopolitical threat yes. remains nuclear weapons. Okay. Right? So those are, di you know, those I got are different you. questions. Totally get it. Go ahead, Governor Inslee. The biggest threat to the security of the United States is Donald Trump. And there's no question. Okay. Congresswoman Gabbard. The greatest, greatest geopolitical threat. The greatest threat that we face is the fact that we are at a greater risk of nuclear okay. war today than ever before in history. Congre Congre uh, Senator Two Klobuchar. threats, economic threat, China, but our, our major threat right now is what's going on in the Mideast with Iran if we don't get okay. our Try to keep it at one, our, our, slimmer, slimmer than what we've been going here. One or two our, words. Our please. existential threat is climate change. We have to confront it before it's too late. Senator Warren. Yeah. Climate change. Yeah, Senator Booker. Nuclear proliferation and climate change. Secretary uh, Castro. Say, uh, China and climate change. Yeah, Congressman Ryan. China, without a question, they're wiping us around the world economically. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Mayor. Russia, because they're trying to undermine our democracy and they've been doing a pretty damn good job of it, we need to stop them. All right, well, thank you for uh, that wide variety of answers. And, and I mean that. No, I mean that in a, that's what this debate is about. Okay, so I have my notes with me. First of all, I said this in the overall debate breakdown video, but if you are Jay Inslee, the answer is climate change. I expected him to say climate change. He said Donald Trump. Now, you definitely can make the case that Donald Trump is the United States' biggest geopolitical threat just because he is so belligerent. But if I'm the climate change guy, I'm not saying Donald Trump. I'm saying climate change. So I expected better from him. Here's the people who got it right. Tulsi Gabbard answered nuclear war. That's correct. Beto says climate change. Correct. Elizabeth Warren says climate change. Cory Booker says climate change and nuclear proliferation. Okay, you can only pick one and you stole that from the other candidates, from Tulsi and Warren. But regardless, I'll let it pass. Um... Here's where we start getting into iffy territory. Um, the first person who responded, John Delaney, and um, he said China. Really? You think China is a geopolitical threat to the United States? Tim Ryan also said China. They're going to pass us economically, and you can make the argument that, you know, whenever a country amasses wealth economically and they become an international powerhouse sure that means that they're also probably going to simultaneously build up their military but to say china it's just tone deaf now here's the worst answer the person who i thought won the debate overall bill de blasio gave the worst answer he said russia he said russia <laughs> <laughs> the
That is the worst answer um, by a mile and a half. And if you're going to give that answer, because we know that he doesn't believe that, he's just pandering, um, as I think Natalie Shore said on Twitter, you're pandering to people who are completely unreasonable within the Democratic Party, like the Rachel Maddow supporters and whatnot. Um, but look, if you're going to say that, then why haven't you proposed a plan that stops Russia from interfering in our elections? You can opt for paper ballots. You can opt for increasing cybersecurity. You can have an Election Integrity Act. Tulsi Gabbard has been a leader here. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, I believe, just proposed her own plan. But if you're not coming up with that, then we know you're just pandering when you say Russia. So, by and large, the question itself was troubling. But as I stated earlier, you can kind of rework this to make it fit your progressive narrative. You don't have to you know, take the hawkish implications and build off of that. You can kind of make it your own. I think Tulsi, Beto, and Warren, and Booker, to be fair, they did that. The others, no, they bought into this notion that, you know, there are really um, large geopolitical threats to the United States when that's just not true. International U.S. hegemony is a thing. Nobody's a threat to us. We're a threat to everyone else. If... There's going to be a threat to international peace and stability. It's going to be the United States. So as president, what I want to hear is that you're going to rein that in. And some of these candidates, Tim Ryan, John Delaney, didn't give us that. Uh, and that's incredibly disappointing because if you're running to be the Democratic Party nominee and you're not explicitly anti-war, what are you doing? What are you doing? So that's all I got to say about this. Uh, Bill de Blasio, the winner... But that was a very bad moment for him in spite of an overall very strong performance.